welcome back and thank you for staying. Um, I think you understand what I meant also earlier. There's a whole day to kind of process the film, why it's good maybe to see them earlier in the day. Um, again, uh, my name is Amir Husak. I'm one of the programmers of this year's festival. And uh, I'm delighted that uh, the director, one of the directors of the film, is uh, here with us today, Komiana Novakova. Uh, originally born in Macedonia, from Yugoslavia, has worked in the field of film and audiovisual arts since 2006. She co-founded the Pravoljudski Film Festival in Sarajevo and acts as its chief curator and director. Between 2018 and 2021, she led the film department of the Museum of Contemporary Arts in Skopje as its principal film curator. She's currently an associate professor at the nonfiction department of uh, ESCAC, Barcelona, Spain, and has formerly taught at the Bellatars Film Factory in Sarajevo. Her research is situated between cinema and contemporary video art, often exploring how moving images address identities, memories, and the collective self. Kumina, Kumina li currently lives between Sarajevo and Skopje, North Macedonia, and here she is now in New York with us. So great to have you. Thank you for joining us, Kumiana. Thank you, Amir. Thank you for inviting me and for showing Disturbed Earth in New York. Absolutely. Um, I want to start by asking you now, after reading your uh, biography again, um, you live between Sarajevo and uh, Skopje, and you were, you were born in Macedonia. Can you tell us a little bit about your connection to Bosnia? When did you move to Bosnia for the first time? Um, I First time I arrived in Bosnia, five years only after the war, I went for a for an international master's degree that was involving most of former Yugoslav countries. And um, once I finished the master's, <laughs> every year I was leaving Sarajevo, but, but that lasted for 16 years. <laughs> so um, first I started um, collaborating and working for the master's degree that I, I finished in Sarajevo whose uh, director was maybe some of um, the Bosnians uh, present here and yourself know Professor Zravko Grevo. He's one of the most important peace activists during the war and, uh, and, and an intellectual. Um, and with him, we co-founded the Pravoljudski Film Festival. And once I, I kind of um, started working on that project, it was really difficult to, to kind of leave uh, the the place so um yeah that's the connection with Sarajevo I guess I'm I, after 16 years in Sarajevo I'm I feel much more from Sarajevo than from anywhere else um let's talk about the film um there's so much to say about the film uh it's a difficult but an important film and um the first time I saw it um I had a lot of questions then I kind of rewatched it um, even though it was difficult to watch, certain parts are really difficult to watch for me, but I, I had to kind of rewatch it and sort of start putting certain things together. And what it does beautifully is it actually really, really pulls us in and helps us understand what that aftermath really is, which often is really hard to articulate. So can you tell us a little bit about the genesis of the project itself and how you decided to work uh, on it with Guillermo, uh, who is not here with us today. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the origins of the piece? Sure. Um, so basically, for me personally, it took me quite a lot to stay and learn um, on what happened in Bosnia before I went, before I could go to Srebrenica for the first time. And since I arrived there for the first time, until we started the project, it was a kind of a, I lived with a kind of a feeling that I, I had to explore more to, I had to, I had this urge to go back more and more and to understand more and to kind of 
um, try to articulate in a different way than from what my experience in Sarajevo or in other places in, in, in Bosnia was. And then what was really crucial moment for the project to start was um, we went in um, 2012 with the Traveling Cinema Project and we were showing in Srebrenica Chaplin it was a very kind of difficult decision to make because um, we were showing a comedy from Chaplin and it was kind of traveling all around Bosnia. So you always had this kind of questions and difficulties, how proper it is, but then why not at, at the same time and so on. So this experience of showing cinema in Srebrenica in the summer and having people gathered and kind of uh, living through this kind of uh, common moment together was really crucial in order to say, okay, um, it's it's a space that it has to be explored and we have to invest ourselves. And then we had a very strange encounter after the, um, the screening. We met a former UN soldier from the Netherlands who... Um, returned to live in Srebrenica and he still lives nowadays, uh, nowadays uh, there. And actually the project started as a kind of an um, exploration into not only him but also many other UN, former UN soldiers who were part of the UN in the moment of the fall of Srebrenica who, are, who has this urge and need to go back to the space and to kind of... Um, try to close this part of their life, which of course it's it's completely impossible. Um, but through the process of developing the project, I had a real difficulty to accept that we would give space for narratives which are kind of not already explored, but um, even maybe the most proper term would be he hegemonic narratives. And my work is really kind of informed more from feminist micro historical uh, practices. And, and for me, it was absolutely not acceptable, even though we already entered this kind of a project development stage. We had already a dossier, we started the fundraising process and so on. So there was a breaking moment in which the project changed and it focused on, on several things. On one side, it focused in the aftermath, as you would say. On the other side, it focused on the relationship between um, nature, whatever it means, between earth, spaces, landscapes, and uh, what remains uh, in a space that went through this kind of a collective traumatic experience. And uh, finally, um, the small kind of micro histories and particularities of each and every personal um, person who who is part of these spaces. So and and uh, as you said, we we it's a co-directed project, and Guillermo is um, someone who has worked in Bosnia many years before the start of this project, and um, kind of knows the space, and. Um, I guess we we shaped it in a way that neither of us could make this work alone. Can you tell us um, how you um, encountered Srečko, Mira, and Mirza, and why them? Uh, and I'm, I'm sure you have also considered possibly others. And if, can you tell us a little bit about this? Basically, since um, the first shooting was uh, the the opening, the 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 prologue part, the opening part was in 2015, and uh, since uh, 2016, 
we realized that um, we need to try to work with characters and but not really in this kind of a character based work that it has to be it has to take the shape or the approach of a mosaic work if we would like to allow for the possibility of different narratives and different kind of histories with a small age to grow and to show the the intertwined uh, if you want um, life stories and in order to achieve that we would go every year at least four times. We were going in different periods of the year, in different uh, seasons, and we were part of the city. So more or less, we knew the whole population, which unfortunately, besides summer, when the diaspora kind of returns, it's not more than 300 people. Um, and the families of Mirza and Srečko were the ones that we would, every time we would go, we would return and we would spend much more time with them and we became, uh, we became really a family. So it came, the decision came very organically. It was not kind of a selection process that we went to, but these were the people that we felt comfortable with and that they felt comfortable with us. Um, it's, a, it's a deeply wounded space, so it's not easy to build trust and to, and to create uh, a relationship that is not, um, that, is, that is open, that is trustful, that is kind of equal. Meire is, um, is uh, one of the, of the characters uh, uh, that, um, that came a bit, a bit later. And this is something that was probably the most difficult, not her per se, but it was really difficult to um, create a relationship with some of the women who are basically the majority of Srebrenica population. And um, not only because it's, uh, it's very difficult, um, but also because it's the most, uh, it's the most, how to say, not problematic, but it's really, um, it takes, it takes a lot to be able to make a decision, okay, this is the image of a woman that we can and we will share without disturbing really um, any kind of potential um, issues. Um, it's also a type of a character that is mostly explored, and for us it was very important this to be kind of to feel um, okay uh, with it. And uh, and finally, um, yes, uh, as I said, it didn't felt as a decision. It was very very organic kind of process. Can you speak a little bit about, I mean, I have a lot of questions and we mm. have a limited time. I do want to leave some time for also for the audience mm. questions, but um, I, I wanted to know a little bit about the editing process because um, I was curious, so it's maybe a two-part question. Uh, you worked with Yelena Maximu, which was one of the renowned uh, uh, editors in the region. Um, can you tell, tell us a little bit about that process and your decision, which is, that would be the second question, and your decision to intervene into this material with text, so with the intertitles that we see in the film. Um, the editing process was extremely difficult uh, because we basically entered editing one month before the start of the pandemic. So we started editing beginning of February, um, 2020 and in March the pandemic started and it made it impossible to work together in the same place in a studio. So it went, everything went online and this had good sides and it had bad sides. The good sides were that 
we could really kind of, each of us, me, Guillermo, and, and Yelena, could um, have um, our own individual reading and experience of the material, but then we would have these shared discussions and each of us would intervene. Um, and to go back to, to uh, like the, the, the questions that you pose, the intervention, after going through the material, we realized that one of the issues, one of the potential dangers was to um, create a work that would claim this kind of objectivity of the observational documentary, which in the case of Srebrenica is impossible. If you decide to make a film about the space as complex as Srebrenica is, you have to also um, take the responsibility of ac or accepting to fail. It's impossible to it's impossible to produce a work that will um, give answers. You have to accept that you will produce a work that poses questions and that is kind also of... Also shows the failure, collective failure. Absolutely. Through your own failure as a filmmaker. And this is something we really wanted to build structurally. And from there came the decision to intervene with a text which is, which takes the we form and which is open by the decision that it's, it's, a, it's a we form, which is open not only to give our voice as filmmakers, but also to embrace other potential subjects within. So it's a kind of a collective subjectivity. And then, finally, it was not working. The text and the material was not working because still it can be, it can be extremely problematic, politically, aesthetically, and so on. And this took us to the archive and took us to another one year of work because only then started the research. So I was researching the, the and uh, yes, and when the decision of the archive came, we realized that it cannot be any archive. There is a lot of archives, but it had to kind of be something that is for us um, acceptable on first on an um, ethical level. So this is when the decision to use forensics only came and all the archive that you see is um, part of the ICTY trials, um, including um, not only the images, the moving images, but also testimonials. So within the three characters text that you see, besides our characters' uh, own testimonies, there are built-in testimonies of survivors who were also witnesses in the tribunal. You just answered also my question about the archive. I was mm -hmm. wondering when in the process it yeah. actually came uh, into, the, uh, into the fabric of the film. Um, because we do have a limited time, I want to open it uh, also to the audience real quick, if there's any questions from the audience. Over there. I thought it was a really lovely film, very moving. Um, thank you. Uh, I did have a, it seemed like you used, um, you punctuated a lot of the, the scenes with images of water and fire. And I was interested in your thinking on that, if you don't mind elaborating. Thank you. Um, I, maybe I uh, mentioned uh, just uh, briefly at the beginning, but for us, um, nature and landscapes were extremely uh, important. It's, Srebrenica is a spot which, um, first it's a very rural, very, um, it's an area which lives from the land and from the nature. And not only nowadays, but also 
before the war. Before the war, it was a really well-known um, spa center uh, with uh, waters that believed to have curing effects uh, for different kind of things. So, and its name, uh, Srebrenica, it's, uh, it comes from, from a kind of a mind that was giving um, uh, Sil silver water in translation is the title of the of the city so the the life in the city is uh, intertwined with um, with uh, the resources that that the area it's it's providing and um, and then the war experience again uh, connects um, even more the population with with the nature, uh, but as well the post-war experience. Um, it's a space where there are still mass graves which are undiscovered, uh, which are uh, which are not uh, located. There are rumors where they are, uh, but um, but the process of exhumations of the bodies is not closed yet, and this connects again in a very particular way the population with earth and land and 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 the natural uh, 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 elements, uh, if you want. So um, there had to be a way for us to build um, a kind of a of a character, if you want, deriving from from the landscape. And it's important, I guess, to also note for some of you who may not be familiar with it, that every year they excavate new bodies, the search continues. So every year there is a, there's a kind of a larger burial uh, ceremony at the, uh, in Srebrenica. So in a certain sense, the place is also re-traumatized by this event in the years. Uh, Absolutely. Since, yeah. It's it's the opening scene. The opening scene is the, is the, is the, is the, 25th um, anniversary of the of the massacre, and it was the last um, big collective burial. Unfortunately, every July 11, the burial is smaller and smaller. Not because the process has been finished, but because there is less and less information on the mass graves. Uh, the locations of the mass graves are known by the former uh, JNA army officials and Serb forces officials who are less and less because time, as time passes by, they're passing away. And, and really the population that is still looking for their closed ones which are not discovered are hoping for the few ones who are still known that that they have participated in the ethnic cleansing that they will provide information where these uh, last uh, mass graves are also we have to know that on a state level there is less and less funds for the search for for mass graves, while this was really supported few until few years ago, now it's a, almost a closed case for the state. Exactly. Um, do we have one more quick question from the audience? I think over here. Yes. Yeah. We'll hear you better. Hi, Gumiana. It's Katerina. I came. Hi. <laughs> we know each other, but not directly. Uh, I wanted to say. Thank you, because uh, uh, watching at your movie, which I was so much looking forward, uh, made me understand that I had to retake a project that I did like 10 years ago in Sarajevo. And I thought it was uh, like too late to publish because uh, things like moved on and I should go back and close it, but it didn't have the chance. But when you say like, uh, we are like destined to fail either way. Um, you as a filmmaker, me as an anthropologist working with a photographer, which by the way, May is gonna go to Sarajevo. She just texts me, tell her I'm gonna contact her. Um, it's, uh, I mean, we will 
fail anyway. So it doesn't matter our creative process. It's just, we can leave it open because it's just about open wounds that probably, well, hopefully will heal one day, but they're not healed now. So I don't, thank you. I loved it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, it's a collective, making a film is a collective work. And the more um, open we are to um, questioning ourselves, I think the more honest the exchange with the space where we work with is, and the more um, healing, healing happens. Um, I think it's very important to also know our own limits and to respect the limits of the space where we work with. But in this kind of complex areas, if we are not open to fail, we will, we have no chance of not hurting the space. So I think in our case, it was the moment that we realized that we cannot make a film that will satisfy us it was the moment that the film started to grow and to kind of, to take shape. I don't think it's a finished work and I don't think finished work is possible, but we could be calm and the process of exchange with our characters arrived and with, 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 with our families over there, it arrived to a point where we felt we knew each other and we felt um, accepted and we felt that we trust each other and we can close it and start a new type of, a new, a new phase maybe in our relationships. And one could maybe even add that because the nature of this tragedy is so open-ended, it feels open-ended, it kind of continues in various different ways, um, that kind of closed works cannot do justice to something like that. And I was thinking a lot actually about the just the, this term, the terminology used, the disturbed earth, there's strictly a, a forensic term, um, thinking about what we're seeing in light now of the conflict in Ukraine, where we're seeing satellite imagery, where we see disturbed earth, we see uh, mass graves again happening, and you kind of wonder at the same time, what will all this evidence do ultimately if, you, if it's put even in a film form? And, and there's that failure that you've, uh, I think, also articulated so, so well uh, when you were saying this. No, it's, uh, it's, it was really, the other day I was seeing the first reports about mass graves in Ukraine. And this is something that unfortunately we didn't learn from Bosnia. I mean, we watched. Or the information the did exist, but only the- Absolutely, the, the, but I mean- Army intelligence. Yes, uh, yeah. it's- uh, we are desperate, really, as a, as a civilization. We watched the start of the of the conflict in Ukraine. We watched the war uh, activities, the killing of people, in order to send teams to search for mass graves while we were watching the creation of the mass graves. So, and it's it's unbelievable um, how how much we. Um, we don't learn from from our own failures. And in the case of Bosnia, um, it's uh, it's almost the strategies and the actions that you see in Ukraine sometimes feel as if it's again reenacted the the violence that took place in Bosnia. 
Um, I'm afraid that's all the time we have for this Q&A, but there's so much more to be said. Um, Kumiana is also going to be around if you, if you want to chat. Um, thank you again all for coming, and thank you, Kumiana, for sharing this important work with us. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you.